Hello and welcome back. Now, do you know about a year ago I made a video on the subject of today's video? It was effectively saying that a number of you are simply using your M.2 slots wrong. And I'll be honest, it was met with a mixed reaction. But nearly a year later, with so many solutions in the market arriving, with M.2 slots coming out of the wazoo, constant, constant systems riddled in M.2, riddled in slots, primarily designed for storage, Despite all of this, there seemingly is a lot of users that still are not aware that you don't have to just use these slots for storage. There are other things to do. So in this video, as quickly as possible, I'm going to cover as many as I can. Some of these you can have heard of. Real quick, though, we need to quickly disclaim that number one, not all of the adapters I'm going to talk about today are going to work with your system. And it's going to be a case of one, utilizing the right operating system with driver support for NAS or even non-NAS use. And secondly, by fewer because a lot of the time, drives like these, when they have M.2 slots, they don't all have the same amount of bandwidth afforded them. Indeed, across all four of these, we actually have different scenarios. This one on the end, for the most part, is populated by Gen 3 times 1 lanes. That means each one of them can achieve 10 gigabit or under 1 gigabyte. And that's really, really crucial because it isn't, you know, 1 gigabyte per second. It's realistically about 800 to 900 megabytes per second. Now this one's slightly different at Gen 3 times 2 That would allow for 20 gigabit or 2 gigabyte, but realistically you are looking at 1.5 to 1.6 gigabytes per second transmission to those slots there. Finally you have this one which is utilizing a Gen 3 times 4 so that allows us to have 40 gigabits per second but again realistically you're looking at between 3100 to 3300 megabytes per second maximum performance then finally this one on the end has a gen 4 times 4 slot there now that affords up to 80 gigabits per second realistically you're looking at performance numbers of around the 7 gigabytes per second now i know someone in the comments is going to give me hell for mixing up a lot of uh, terminology there but just trust me, the point I'm making is all of these give different amounts of bandwidth. And once you use an M.2 adapter on them, the result is that even if that adapter promises big, big performance numbers, you're still always going to be throttled by the connection in the M.2. Right, so you've decided one of your M.2 slots, well, you don't want to use it for storage anymore. What are you going to do? Well, the most obvious one, these we're going to go through the most well-known ones at the start of the video. Number one, you can use this. This is probably the most commonly used M.2 Easy DIY adapter in the market right now, allowing you to add six SATA ports. And also, this one is dirt cheap. You can pick this up for as little as five to ten dollars quite easily on a couple of different websites now on top of that this has its own SATA controller there on board keep in mind that again although each of those SATAs there when you connect even a SATA SSD you might get lucky to get 350 to 400 megabytes per second if you rate them all together you're still going to be at the behest of that connection also Different ones of these do sometimes have controllers on board as media and stuff like that, which can also reduce things further. Generally, take it as read that when you connect this to a system, unless you spend for a slightly more premium version, you're looking at 10 gigabit or one gigabytes per second potential maximum throughput on this. You might get lucky and get a decent enough controller and you're sticking it inside a times two lane to make the most out of it, a gen three times two lane, but still, that's the most well-known adapter of the lot. Another well-known adapter that is growing in popularity is an M.2 to 10 GBE NIC. Now, this is a much more minor version. The one we talked about in a previous video is from IO Crest. It has a much longer ribbon there, but this is allowing you to, with an onboard, typically a Quantia controller, allow you to add 10 gigabit network connectivity externally there. Lovely stuff. However, keep in mind, again, as we mentioned during our disclaimer, if you connect this, again, these knock around for about $70 to $100. When you do connect this to your system, if you put this on a uh, 10 gigabit uh, equipped PCIe uh, M.2 lane, so that would be perhaps a Gen 3 times 1 uh, or a Gen 2 times 4, having a 10 gigabit bandwidth for that M.2 is still not going to be enough to max this out. Because remember, this can achieve one gigabyte per second. And what you want to do is get this on at least a Gen 3 times 2 
lane M.2. Keep that in mind because some users get that a bit muddled up and they end up putting this inside their M.2 system and then get annoyed that they're only able to achieve around 800 megabytes per second. Next up, PCIe upgrade. So those of you that want to convert one of those M.2s into a lovely traditional full fat PCIe, such as a graphics card, such as a 10 gig upgrade of a standard PCIe, or even bigger, beefier dual port cards, uh, 50 gig, oh sorry, 25 gig, 50 and 100 gig cards, depending on the port numeracy. Well, again, there are adapters. You can take advantage of things like this one. This knocks around if you get a good quality one with a decent length ribbon. You're looking at about 20 to 25 dollars to convert a Gen 4 times 4 M.2 NVMe into a full fat PCIe attachment. Keep in mind, of course, that if even if you did attach this to a Gen 4 times 4 slot, like the B-Link here on the end, you're still only gonna have that times four speed to play with. So even though you can attach a times 16 length card, you're gonna be capped in at that times four speed. Now, some cards are gonna need more power. That's why you can get hold of ones like this. This is an M.2 to PCIe upgrade, but this also arrives with the additional power input. Now you are going to have to supply your own external power and maybe you're getting a small form factor case like a, a John's Bow N10 which may have the extra PSU cable spin-off to attach into this to you know create an external PCIe and then use active external airflow there. But it's not an ideal solution and really I would only recommend this if you're going to be utilizing a system that needs GPU support that doesn't have it already. This is something we got through uh, to take advantage of installing TrueNAS or an Asus or Flash Store, which is running a non-integrated graphics CPU, and this allowed us to add integrated graphics conveniently there. Ultimately, this is one is slightly more expensive, and there are uh, external casings that you can get for M.2 uh, GPU external uh, build-outs, but still nonetheless, when it comes to PCIe, just like everything else, factor in the lane allocation, both the speed and the bandwidth, because that's gonna make all the difference just how much you can take advantage of these cards. Now, there's gonna be some users that think a system like this is a little inelegant because it's all over the place, and although the cables are actually quite high quality there, it's still not fantastic, you're still gonna need something for the PCI to live in there. And that's where things like this, such as the M.2 to Oculink adapter, something we've talked about on the channel before, allows us to connect to a system like this, but then you can scale out into a second chassis and then take advantage of Oculink. And again, there are Oculink GPUs and Oculink EPCIE that allow you to add a bunch of features. Indeed, in a video not too long ago, we were able to take advantage of this M.2 to Oculink adapter to attach this external graphics card to a system with an N100 CPU there. That many only had a Gen 3 times 2 slot to play with, but it still allowed us to add a full spec graphics card over Oculink to a system and CPU profile like these that never dreamed of having an external graphics card or even internal graphics card bolted onto them. And it was all made possible thanks to a little adapter like this that again, set me back, I think about $12. Next up, this one might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but what about an M.2 to M.2 adapter, or more precisely, an extender? The ability to uh, take advantage of one of the M.2s inside your system, but add a length of ribbon to make sure you can use it more conveniently, because sometimes M.2 slots are actually installed in quite inconvenient locations, and on more compact NAS systems, like some of the ones I mentioned in the introduction, you can end up with a situation where, as much as you want to use um, a full-size M.2, or you want to use an M.2 adapter, you simply don't have the space. And there are several options in the market right now, available from different websites with different levels of ribbon attached. And some of them you can get without the ribbon or purchase the ribbon separately. But the big takeaway that you need to factor in here isn't just that you wanna make sure you get one at the correct angle. Again, make sure you factor in the M.2 deployment on your system of choice. But moreover, make sure you get one at the correct gen for what you're going for. What do I mean by that? Because you might get some of the cheaper adapters that are actually not going to give you full gen four. Uh, M.2 NVMe PCIe pass-through. So you might use one of these connected to a Gen 4 slot on your board and then suddenly find yourself capped at Gen 3. It's pretty unlikely because the majority of adapters I've seen online are now rated for Gen 4, but not all of them, crucially. So shop carefully.
And probably the weirdest one on today's video probably comes down to this one. This is an M.2 to 20 pin adapter. And I know what you're thinking, who the hell is this for? And I'll be honest, it's not for a vast number of users, but ultimately this is the start of an answer to something that if you Google online has been asked for a while. How exactly do I convert an M.2 into multiple M.2 connections like this one? This is from CWWK and long story short, this allows you to attach your single M.2 NVMe slot like so into four M.2 NVMe's there. This is something they use in their P5 and P6 series of compact NAS devices. These rock out on an N100, N305, N150, and N355 Intel twin late and order late series of CPU devices and does require a BIOS update in order to take advantage of it. So its scope is arguably a lot more limited than the majority of M.2s I've talked about today, although a lot of them do require a bit of tinking in the back end one way or another. But nonetheless, this does allow for the scope to scale out from one M.2 into multiple M.2s. And although the BIOS update from uh, CWWK appears to only apply to the P5 and P6 series, as they do a lot more scale out solutions there, don't be surprised if there is the option or at least something online that will allow users to take advantage of a 20 pin adapter like this one and allow them to scale out M.2s down the road. So this is more of a taste of things to come. And here is another one that we did mention in the previous video from uh, Linkrill or LR Link. And this is a M.2 to 2 times 10 GBE adapter. Now it is taking advantage of SFP and you are going to have to make sure you have uh, either the correct drivers or a system with the, the correct support for it. So this one is a little bit more bespoke than some of the other ones we've discussed and it actually hybrids in a lot of the other stuff that we've discussed because of the way it's going in. There's a pre-made M.2 to 2 times 10 GB adapter and if you've got the lane and support to take advantage of it, I really do think this is a shout. And also so, you know, hats off the link reel here. They do go into a tremendous amount of detail on their site about how this works. And if you do use their support, as I did on the previous video, you can get this working in some quite wacky setups. Next up, in the last year or so, you may have heard me talking about expander cards like these one that take advantage of a SAS connection known as 8654 and 8643. These are connections that you can add to supported motherboards and add expansive cards for adding more storage. Now, where does M.2 come into this? Well, I'm pleased to say that although a lot of users use 8643 connectors on their motherboard or adapter cards to add more storage, you can get M.2 to PCIe adapters that allow you to add these cables to your motherboard even if you don't have these connectors. And then from there, take advantage of these expansive motherboards. Now, focusing on SFF8643 first, that's the easiest one, that allows you to add this connection via M.2 adapters that are pretty darn cheap. And then from there, you can go ahead and start adding those expansion cards from uh, brands like CWWK, where they're working on ways to turn mini PCs into more expansive systems. And because they're new and NAS motherboards are taking advantage of 8643 more, they are working on more adapters, which means that even if you don't have that connector, this M.2 adapter will allow you to take advantage of these expansive cards and scale out your storage down the line. Likewise, just like the 8643, you can get the 8654 SFF cables adapter into an M.2. Now, this actually makes things a little bit more flexible and it allows for more bandwidth there. And although they are a little bit more expensive, you are going to find quite a lot of adapters supporting 8654. And from here, once you've got 8654 from one of many, many, many retailers there, then you can open up into other uh, kind of scale out cards like this one. This has got six M.2 NVMEs, and this feeds into just a single 8654 SFF cable there. You may need additional power if you've got any uh, a GPU built in. Again, maybe using SFX or, or maybe even a flex PSU with a spare cable on a compact setup, but it does allow you to take advantage of different kinds of uh, M.2 to 8654 adapter cards. This one, for example, requires two of those cables, so you're going to need two of those M.2. So this is where the lanes and the bifurcation are definitely going to need some concern, but includes the cables and allows you to attach four full length, four times four 
M.2 NVMEs, but of course then you're going to be at the behest of those M.2 connectors there. There's even combo cards like this one that arrive with six SATA uh, ports there and two M.2 NVMEs there. And again, it takes advantage of just a single one of those 86 um, 8654 SFF cable outs there, but again, think about your bandwidth. Another thing to talk about is just real quickly to remember that not all 8654 uh, SAS cable is the same, and 8654 eight lane and four lane have got different connectors there on the rear. Now, it's not the end of the road, you can get adapters that allow you to convert between them, which again means you can take advantage of one of these but you're gonna have to make sure you get it in the right direction and it will be costly, but ultimately make sure you double check that you're utilizing the right lane allocation and physical and lane size to take advantage of these adapters if you're gonna go down this road to take advantage of these adapters. Finally, there's gonna be some of you wondering why I'm not giving a lot of credence to uh, B and M and A and E adapters. There's a lot of you that are gonna be running um, little NAS boxes where they've got a spare Wi-Fi card attachment that you think is going to waste because you're never gonna use Wi-Fi. And of course, there are adapters in the market. There are adapters in different directions. There's adapters that utilize, again, the E key. You've got the M, the B. Everything's all sort of laid out across the different adapters and you can filter them into SAR, filter them in to kind of low spec M.2. You've got all of those options open to you. The issue still lies in, however, about how many of you can actually take advantage of these, particularly when you start factoring in the physical space as well, which these slots typically are filled by. So I'm probably gonna span this out into its own standalone video because there are some interesting options out there. But I think we should stop there for now before we go down the long winding road of M.2A, E key, M key, M SATA and more. I will make a follow up video on that if you guys want to see it because there are, although fewer, there are definitely some fun little adapters in the market that allow you to turn, for example, a Wi-Fi connection in your system to a standard 2280 linked SSD. You're still at the behest of the SSD, PCIe, gen lanes and speed assigned to that port but there's a lot to play with there. I hope you have found this video helpful. If you have, again, link below are all of the different adapters that I've talked about today, hopefully listed on Amazon and AliExpress. If you found this video helpful, and if you were gonna to go to those shops anyway, make sure that's true. If those are true, then please use those things. It results in a small commission coming here to NASCAR Pairs. It's just me and Eddie doing what we do, and it really helps us out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.